Hello everyone. Hello my friends. How are you all doing? Welcome to Facts and Two Cents. This is Petal. Happy Monday. If you like Mondays, if you're like me, you hate Mondays, but that's okay. We're at Monday anyway, <laughs> no matter if we like it or not. But how are you all doing? I hope you had a great Easter yesterday, whatever it is you were doing. If you were like me, you were working. But um, whatever it is you did for Easter yesterday, hope you had a great time with your family and whatever else you were doing. Uh, but welcome to Monday. As uh, Church Nelly says, marvelous Monday. Hello, marvelous Monday to you, Church Nelly, and all of our wonderful, wonderful squaddies in South Carolina. Hello to uh, Khadija and Black Queen, our awesome moderator and our awesome moderator, Karen M. Hello, Karen M. How are you? Uh, who else is joining us today? I know it's a little, not as impromptu as I sometimes have to do, but, um, you know, um, with a little bit of warning, I think, today. Hello, Gwen is here, and Nalo Thando is hanging out with us in South Africa. Hello, Nalo Thando. How, uh, how are you doing? And Annie is here, and Faith is here. And who else is here? Oh, Amaka is here. Hello, Amaka, and Sonia, and Tara, and Connie hanging out with us from Switzerland. Hello, and Kim Peaches, and Auntie Jane, and Sonia. Who else is here? Lottie is here and Sam is here. Hi, guys. How are you all? Uh, Little Mac is here and Novi and Wendy. Hello, guys. And to all of our other friends coming in, we'll say hello as they come in. Hopefully more will join us. But I know on short notice, look, people are busy. They have things to do, places to go, people to see. You know, If they could join us now, great. If not, the replay is always there. They can join us then as well. But to all of you who are either in the chat, and even if you're not in the chat, hello, 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 happy Monday. What is going on? Well, I thought it was um, great. And actually, I caught a copy of this from one of our squaddies who, on uh, X who did a little bit of a look back to all of the wonderful things that our faves did in March. I mean, today is April Fool's, and I hope you weren't fooled in any way. <laughs> And so I haven't really been fooled yet. I'm sure it's going to come up at some point today. <laughs> but this is not April Fool's with this. This is what our faves actually did in March. And so when I saw that on, on X, I was like, you know, yeah, our faves did so many wonderful things in March. Why not just take a look back and just, you know, reminisce and and uh, with a little bit of memory, you know, down memory lane of all the wonderful things of our faves did. And, you know, these are just some photos of uh, things that they did. And I thought, oh, yeah, because, I mean, there's so much horrible news in the world and so much negative stuff. And our faves are out there doing great things, bringing joy to the world, bringing good things to the world as their um, their motto is basically show up and do good. And so, which is what they've been doing. They've, you know, definitely hold on to that. And so they've been doing incredible things in the US and beyond. And so it's been really, really great to just see the wonderful things. This is just in May. This is some other things. You know, of course, we see in the top left photos of Megan at the International Women's Day uh, uh, panel at South by Southwest. And also, uh, obviously, we see archetypes up there, archetypes, um, the new edition of it. Well, not new, but it's uh, now on Lemonada. And now it's available on all platforms. So if you still have not listened to it, definitely go on and listen to all of the episodes. They are there on Lemonada or whatever um, podcast platform you listen to podcasts on. If you don't listen to podcasts, you know, start. <laughs> At least if you're here, you're listening to this one or watching this one. So, but if you have not, you know, listened to hers, definitely jump on there. It's amazing. You know, you have Serena and Mariah and wonderful Mindy, uh, Mindy Kaling and all the other, so many others. 
that um, did such a great job with this. So kudos to Megan. We also saw them as part of South Up by Southwest. We see Megan with the birthday cake in the middle there. Visited, they visited some of the families uh, in Uvalde, Texas, who obviously know were affected by the uh, massacre there. Uh, and so was it two years ago? And so Megan and Harry definitely stayed in there with family, with the families and some of the families. And they, this is there they are with John Martinez. That's him at the bottom with Megan right under the archetypes fo uh, photo. And these, um, that's his family. That's Megan. Um, presenting his mom with a birthday cake up there with Harry in the back there. It's like, oh, my babe. <laughs> and um, wonderful time that they had with uh, Kaboom had an event. So they all, um, they were all there as we know. Archwell, Harry and Meghan's uh, foundation teamed up with Kaboom to create a playground for the community. So they had a community event and we saw Harry, you know, I think Meghan, both of they were there. And then we saw photos of Harry on a table painting with some of the ladies around him. And they had an incredible time there. And um, bottom left, you also see Harry with another one of the family members there as part of that Uvalde community. And so that was really wonderful. We also saw them um, with the uh, Af um, Afghanistan um, event, uh, 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 not event, but the um, Afghanistan groups that they created, the welcome groups for Afghan, especially Afghan women in the U.S. And so they have, obviously there are many chapters. I think there are 11 chapters of this welcome groups around the country welcoming uh, Afghan community, uh, women especially, and their families really. You, they're there, their families are there, and uh, welcoming them and really helping them to get acclimated to the community. And, um, you know, they come together and they cook or they sew or they go swimming or whatever it is they're doing. So, obviously, Harry and Megan were there with them in Texas, and that's Megan at the bottom there with, um, you know, admiring the dress. And then we see Harry also at the bottom of the, um, of the cake photo meeting with um another part of the group there so it was really wonderful um that they were able to do so many things in texas that we didn't even know and i just realized i forgot to um to put include a photo with them presenting the archwell um the tech award to dr oh shoot what's her name is it dr judy is it Dr. Judy was her name? I don't remember her name right off the top of my head all of a sudden. And um, that's the Archwell uh, Digital Civil Rights Award. They presented her with that. And I just realized that I didn't pull that in. And also they went off to a barbecue place as well that I didn't pull that. Oh. I missed a couple of things there. Sorry. And, um, but right under um, on the left hand side, right under the South by Southwest uh, photo, they had the uh, motherhood in media, and that Archwell funded the study about just how mothers are portrayed or motherhood is portrayed in the media. And they did all of this study that may, most likely, you know, how it's presented in Hollywood is the moms are young, thin, white, and they don't really veer away from that too often where they present all cultures and races and sizes of people who are moms and so, or age. And so they are looking to change that. And so they teamed up with Gina Davis's foundation and they did this study and they, I'm assuming are gonna be presenting that to studios and writers who create these pro programs for television and film to show them, okay, this is what you've been presenting so far. And this is not representative of really what's going on in the world. There are a lot more people who are moms that are not just white, straight, white, thin women. You know what I mean? There are a whole bunch of other people out in the world that uh, are moms. And that is not see really seen on television or in films as they should be. So they are definitely working on that. And... Um, along with, you know, Archwell working with paid leave for all and all of those things. And also at the top there, we see Harry with uh, the Diana Awards uh, that was presented a little bit later in the month as well. So they, these are just some of the things that Archwell um, has been involved in for the month of 
March. I mean, it's been wonderful. I definitely look forward to um, to seeing all the great things that they're going to do in April, obviously, today. <laughs> Obviously, April starts today, and so we look forward to seeing all the wonderful thing that's going to be happening throughout the month. But I just thought it, would, you know, it was great to just to look back and just to remember that our faves are out there doing great things, no matter what is going on in um in the UK. Doesn't matter what stuff they try to pull and try to pull our faves' name and stuff that they have no business. I'm really happy that our faves are minding their business. <laughs> they are not doing any of this. They are minding their business and focusing on their, whatever it is they're doing under their tree in Montecito. They are minding their business, and we just love the fact that they are minding their business. You just stay minding your business. That's all we need for you. <laughs> and then you could show us what you need to show us when you want to show us. So I absolutely just love this. So yeah. And uh, these are a couple of other um, photos as well. Obviously, this was part of South by Southwest on the um, on, on the left there. And Harry, obviously, um, they're supporting Megan in the International Women's Day. And also, this was a part of um, the event that they had with the Uvalde family. Amanda Henderson is from uh, one of the local TV stations there. She tweeted, says, Uvalde, Angel Layla Salazar's legacy is known by so many, which includes Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Um, the track star's family shared this photo of her mom visiting with them today at a local event where they spoke with and supported families of the Uvalde victims and the survivors. So again, and there's so many children who um, were tragically taken, and so their families are, you know, doing everything they can to support each other as they really struggle to make sense of what happened and struggle to survive after that tragedy. And so it's really great that Harry and Meghan again even though we remember how criticized especially Meghan was when she went there, and to see that they're the ones that stayed. You know, they're the ones that stayed and stayed in touch with the families and stayed in their lives and are helping them to heal. It's just, it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. So again, as you see um, her mom with Harry and Meghan there. So yeah, these beautiful lives taken so senselessly. Again, this country and guns, it's like, I don't understand what will need to happen for <laughs> something to be done with these guns, but obviously not this because it's still happening. So there we are. But anyways, um, again, going back to our phase, just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful work um, in uh, March. And so happy Easter from our Nigerian uh, Invictus team over there. They are celebrating uh, Easter uh, yesterday with, along with everyone. So they're just wishing everyone happy Easter. And Invictus Game Studio says nothing but smiling faces and sun on the snow at the AFBST Championships. We delight to see participants from all over the world bond and heal together. Uh, with power of sports Invictus beyond the games. And this is, again, the wonderful things with Invictus. I mean, they have all of this stuff year round going on. And I think this, if I'm not, excuse me, if I'm not mistaken, this is in Whistler. I think what they're doing is they're bringing different groups to come. And obviously, people, especially who are going to be participating in the games, they've been bringing different groups to come out and get used to the snow, get if, especially our African um, brothers and sisters who had never been on snow or uh, many of them may ne never have skied before or whatever. So they, um, so if I'm not mistaken, if this is a different place that I apologize, but I think uh, this is back there in Whistler where they did the same thing like when Harry and Meghan were there and they were a whole group of, including like Peacemaker and stuff, they were all there uh, getting acclimated and getting used to the, the mountains and getting used to the snow there. So they've been bringing different groups to come and, and, and experience it. So it's really, but it, again, wherever it is, it's just really fun to see Invictus Games just 
all through the year, athletes, Invictus athletes have all of these opportunities to for camaraderie, for sports, for, for anything in, in anything to help them along in their healing. So it is just it's wonderful to see. So kudos, Invictus. And uh, Prince Harry, <laughs> I'm telling you, Better Up is doing great. They just acquired, I think, it was, I think it was Pledge 1%, but they just acquired this company and they are doing great. And so Pledge 1% says, we are proud to work with Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, and the entire Better Up team on their social impact programs. And says, read more about Better Up partnership with Invictus Games Foundation. So obviously we know... Um, Better Up has been providing free services for Invictus, obviously, because Prince Harry, obviously, and Prince Harry is the chief impact officer of Better Up. So, I mean, so many different companies and um, are getting the benefit of of what Better Up has to offer. It's really, really awesome. I know what it was a couple of years ago they had the um, the Commonwealth, the kids from the youth. What is it? The Queen's Commonwealth Trust, the, the youths there, they were all um, able to have a free, better up, you know, they had it better up resources for free. And obviously that came via Prince Harry. So it is really awesome to see that, uh, you know, more and more people are benefiting from it. Obviously, better up has been a, to the last to Invictus Games and so helping the veterans there. And also with Better Up, they're doing again the uplift. And so this month on the 10th and the 11th, um, they're going to be doing it says we're where human potential fuels business performance. And so it's going to be in San Francisco and they are going to be doing it. I'm just going to move my um, my banner there for a second so I can read this. Give me one second. Again, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, go ahead and subscribe. Click the notification bell so you know when we drop a video. And please like and share the video, please. Thank you. That would be awesome. Um, so it says, join fellow senior executives, groundbreaking, groundbreaking researchers, and well-known our well-renowned speakers for this two-day summit. Learn how to drive transformative business outcomes through the theme of courageous leadership. And so they're going to be a host. I was looking through all the people who are going to be speaking, a host of speakers. That's like a ton of speakers for over two days. And so it looks amazing. Prince Harry is going to be speaking. Alex Robichaud is going to be speaking. Don't know if they're going to do the same thing where Harry comes in the last day and that him and, and Alex are like the last, you know, keynote speakers of the thing. I know Alex usually introduces it on the first day and so as well. So I don't know how they're going to do it this time. But again, I'm hoping it's online as well so people can access it online. Who knows? Probably. We will see, I guess, closer to it. Um, I have to go on their website to see if they have that option available. But our Prince Harry is going to be speaking with uh, speaking on uh, uh, either the 10th or the 11th with Better Up. So it's very, very, very exciting. Um, I'm going to go into the chat for in a bit. So um, let's see what else we can do. Oh, and uh, this, this is actually really cool. It says the period company, periods and period company in the world. We're so proud of our collaboration with Gianco Foundation, which I think is David Oyelowo's foundation, if I'm not mistaken, and the Period Abundance Foundation with the support of the Archwell Foundation. No one in the world should go without period products, and we are on a mission with so many amazing people and organizations to make this mission a reality. Sustainable products can make a true difference in the lives and thanks to this pilot program, 1,120 young girls, women, and mothers receive products and join in the menstrual education workshops. It may seem small, but these products last for years. Taking away the stress, expense, and burden of trying to access period products. We're so excited as this is just the beginning of this program in Nigeria. A big yay for periods. And this is a big deal for these young ladies. They don't have to miss school. They don't have to, you know, all the things we need. I mean, as women, we know um, when we are when we have our periods and all the things that goes into this. So it's so wonderful that, you know, they have all this stuff for free and they don't have to deal with the burden, the expense, or trying to access them, So, which is so important. And so they can work and go to school and all of the things that they would miss if they don't have this, you know, that on top 
on top of the discomfort and the pain and all of that stuff, we know what periods are. So um, it's so wonderful that uh, Archwell is part of supporting and funding this uh, program. And so it is, it's absolutely wonderful. So again, Archwell showing up and doing good. So <laughs> it is really wonderful. I'm telling you, our faves are doing great. <laughs> absolutely great. And so back to Invictus, I didn't get a chance to read this, uh, read the whole thing. So if you're interested, definitely jump on their website because this is there. It says Invictus Endeavor Domestic Grants. And it says as part of our 10 year anniversary, 10,000 pounds is now available each uh, I'm sorry, to each member of the Invictus Community of Nations as part of our series of domestic grants. Our aim is to increase access to sporting opportunities across the 23 nations of the Invictus community. The Invictus Games uh, Foundation la launches the 10,000 pound domestic series grant Grand series, sorry, for Invictus Community of Nations. So each nation, it seems, uh, have access to $10,000 grant to help with whatever programs, you know, whatever sports programs they want to do in their country to help their athletes. So I just think it's amazing. I, again, I didn't get a chance to go in and read all about it. So if you're interested in it, if you're in a country and you, and you, you know, you know of the Invictus community in your country that may not know about this, hopefully every but all the countries know about it. But just in case, you know, just put a bug in their ears. Like, hey, you know, Invictus Endeavor, they have this domestic grant that you guys can access to help your your tea, your teammates and uh, or at least your community with um, money that can create, help create these sports that can benefit the the athletes and, and the, the vets there. So um, it's. I just think it's absolutely wonderful that they that they have this, and so it's like kudos, man. So Invictus is doing great. Our faves is doing great. We're still praying that Invictus does not go to the UK. I don't care what it is they want. I don't care how many mo how much money they put up for it. We still don't want it there. <laughs> Korea or Washington? That's my picks. So <laughs> it's all, at this point. It's like. Uh, if it's going to be there, it might as well be in North Korea. So it's just like, <laughs> I was like, South Korea or Washington, it is. So that is what I am rooting for. I don't know. I can only speak for myself. But, you know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just, the UK is literally just too toxic. It is just too toxic. So I'm going to jump in the chat for a second. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's just jump in the chat for a second. We'll get to that other stuff after and see what you guys are saying, whether you are reminiscing about our faves and doing great work. <laughs> Thank you, Rhonda, for agreeing. I'm assuming you're agreeing that no UK for Invictus. <laughs> Anywhere but there, yes. <laughs> Rafaela, thank you so much for your super sticker. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I think I have, oh, wait, wait a minute. I think I have some support for no UK Invictus. Yes. <laughs> I think none of us are feeling that one. We do not want to have to go, you have to deal with the UK and the nasty press. So no, we want either no, uh, South Korea or Washington. I think they seem to be the top bids apart from the, whatever it is that the UK is doing. So yeah, Black Queen, thank you so much. Yes, please um, share, comment, um, subscribe or join the channel if you're able. That would be amazing. Thank you so much, Black Queen. Um, Little Max says, uh, that was uh, that's great with this program. Over a thousand girls can go to school and get their education. With, uh, which help families, both their current and any future ones, they have to live better lives. Yep, absolutely, absolutely agree. I think it's a wonderful program. Uh, let's see. Um, scrolling up. Hmm. Um, I think everybody's just saying hello, <laughs> just saying hello to each other, which is great, which is absolutely great. So, 
<laughs> but I mean, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed a little going down, you know, even though it's like a month, a little memory lane going down with what our faves have done. So there. <laughs> Um, Kim Peaches says, h and are going about their business and keeping their heads up to the sky for their help coming from the Lord. Absolutely. It sure doesn't come from anyone else. It comes from the Lord, which is absolutely great. Um, little Max says, Gwen Daniels, none of their charities are going, are going not bankrupt and many because of the attention Harry and Meghan bring to them. They are doing well. I love how the squad donates as well. Yeah, that's the one thing. It's like they pay attention to the charities and not just showing up and uh, waving and shaking hands. They're really involved and invested in these charities or in these uh, groups. I don't even like to call them charities, so to say. But they are really um, invested in, in each of these groups and really give to them, which is so important, not just show up and, you know, wave for the cameras. Um, oh, Blue Joy has been a member for a month. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so happy you're part of the community, Blue Draws. Happy one month. Thank you so much for your support. She says, happy Easter pedal. All the best wishes to your dad. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm sure he appreciates all of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That reminds me, I've got to call him today. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, let's see. Um, Little Max says, this is one of my favorite things about Harry and Meghan. They stay involved and keep working quietly. Yeah, me too. I love that about them. They, you know, they let us see what they want us to see when they want us to see it and not before. And I love that. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, um. So what else is going on? Let's see. I'm just going to scroll down here to see if anybody's making a comment on this. Let's see. Oh, that's okay, Kathy. I'm just happy you're here. <laughs> we didn't start it too long, so you didn't miss any. You didn't miss much at all. <laughs> so we're just talking. We were just doing a recap of our Sussex faves, what they were doing uh, throughout the month of March. So you didn't miss a whole lot. So there you go. Um, uh, yeah, so... But I am happy you're here. So there you go. Uh, what else is happening? Well, you know, we leave our wonderful faves in Montecito. We're going to jump across the pond for a second. I mean, I haven't been on here for, for a few days. So, of course, I'm sure you guys have seen it. I'm assuming Baron and um, Duchess of Success and the others have most likely covered this. I mean, we know we've seen... Um, Victoria Newton on the BBC talking about her contact with... Uh, Kensington Palace, uh, you know, with what, you know, they had obviously, uh, Victoria, she's the editor of The Sun. They put out this, lay off Kate, stop bullying over edited pic. I mean, imagine someone, you are Victoria Newton and you are the editor of, especially one, uh, which was actually not even just one, it was many articles that he wrote attacking uh, Megan. And you were the editor, if, even if that was the only thing that you wrote about Megan and you were the editor of, you should know better than to even open your mouth to tell anybody about laying off Kate. <laughs> Because, I mean, how do you justify your attacks on Harry and Meghan? How do you justify your attacks on Meghan, especially, who have done nothing to you at all? And for her to even feel like, you know, have the, well, you know, it was because of me putting layoff Kate that all the other press started to fall in line. Basically, whatever the sun does, they tend to do that. A lot of the other so-called mainstream press, they sort of follow the sun's lead. Obviously, it's Rupert Murdoch seems to be their mothership over there. And so we remember her on the BBC, this um, sort of round table show on the BBC Sunday morning thing, I think it was last Sunday. And she confirmed that, yeah, she, they were in talks with, um, Ken's, with uh, Kensington Palace and, uh, you know, trying to figure out how to stem the tide of all the negative publicity they were getting off of the, you know, Kate it, um, edited full fake photo or the Mother's Day photo. And she said that they also 
contacted the the palace about the farm video the video of kate and supposedly kate and william going shopping and and that kensington palace was fine with them print um you know with the video and they they basically gave them permission to go ahead and put that all out there and so she was on bbc saying all this thing and it's just like you basically do well, what she did was basically just um you know confirmed everything harry said about the contract that they have with the palace and it was just like did she realize she just confirmed everything that harry just said <laughs> but again these people have no they have no mirrors they don't look at themselves they have no self-awareness so they just do things and you're like uh you're the one that's saying harry was lying yet you just confirmed exactly what he said <laughs> about your relationship with the palace unbelievable but we remember all of that stuff and so obviously we remember when that video came out and the whole thing was that you know everybody was like wait a minute that's not kate well not everybody but people with a brain and who weren't royalist and who weren't taken in by all the nonsense from the british press were all like that's not kate <laughs> she doesn't look like her and if that was kate obviously who just supposedly had abdominal surgery and you're like well how is somebody who just had abdominal surgery you know one is walking so fast and carrying what looks like a heavy bag of groceries and what husband if your wife just had surgery would allow his wife to carry a heavy bag of surgery and she is walking basically bounding off i mean you know one step from running you would say and so it was just like what and so of course the majority of people was like no that's not kate that's a look-alike person and this is the person that most people were saying you know she is the one as you can see even the sun she was featured in the sun as kate middleton's look-alike and when you look at the photo it more looked like her than it looked like kate but you know and so some people were like, uh, some think the Kate lookalike is the one in the farm video, uh, uh, farm shop video. Uh, her website is no longer working. She's also disappeared from social media. Wouldn't it be interesting if a recognition, which is a facial recognition software, um, wouldn't it be interesting to use recognition to compare the photos in Kate lookalike in the Kate lookalike and the one in the farm video. And at the bottom, there's another person saying, you know, my name is Gabriel, I guess that's her. My name is Gabriel Monroe Douglas and I'm Kate Middleton's lookalike. Follow my royal adventure here. So she, I guess, was a famous lookalike and she would make money, I guess, off being Kate Middleton's lookalike. So she was well known around as a person that really looks like Kate. I mean, I'm looking at her, I don't, you know, maybe just some of the air. I, I, I don't see the resemblance, but I could kind of, sort of, maybe sort of see a little bit, but she was a lookalike and everybody know her as the Kate Middleton lookalike. And the, actually the photo with the hair, the way how her hair is and all of that stuff quite looks like her. And so much more than it looks like Kate, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so the whole thing started. And of course, it's been all over the internet. And people are saying that, wait a minute, that doesn't look like her. And so because, as we know, with the British press, just in case you didn't know this story, um, anyone connected with the Sussexes in any way, shape, or form, we know that Christopher Boozy did, was um, in the Harry and Meghan docuseries. So anybody who had any, I mean, the slimmest, the slimmest link to the Sussexes in any way, all of a sudden becomes their, according to the British press, their mouthpiece, their best friend, their ally, their pickwad. And on top of that, you're a, squ a Sussex squad. So the British press, because obviously we, the squad was all, I mean, it's obvious that, you know, we we're like, that doesn't look like her. And then they, with the whole fake photo and all of that squad, the stuff, the squad has been talking about the stuff and calling out the British press and everything else. So of course they started to go after the squad and they started to go after, especially Christopher Boozy. As we know, Christopher Boozy is very outspoken with things and he comes with receipts and so and i think one of the things even though the sussex squad have been here since 2019 there is something in the british press that refuses to understand that we will not be intimidated and we're not intimidated by them that we're not afraid of them 
<laughs> and they seem to still not learn that lesson. <laughs> and with all the stuff that has gone on since 2019, they still have not learned that they cannot control the squad. They cannot make us do anything or believe their lies. And they can't control us. But they're still trying, though. They're still trying, though. They're still trying to pick one person to think, oh, let me slur that and smear this person's name in all way and shape or fashion. And that will get them to back down. And it's like, yeah, maybe that'll work in the UK. Maybe that'll work on UK people. It doesn't work anywhere else. You know? <laughs> Plus, we don't care about you. We don't care about the royals. We don't care if we have access to them or not. So it just it's really wild that they just have not gotten they have still haven't gotten that or uh, understood this. So of course they went after Chris Boozy and the son, as you can see, this is actually was a US son. But this whole spread of vile slurs about Kate, death threats to Meg and Meg's enemies, trolls who are proudly sus um hashtag Susan Squad. So they went after us and they went after as you can see, a huge photo of Christopher Boozy claimed like, you know, when you look at that, you would think that Christopher was part of, you know, saying like whatever, you know, wishing death on Kate and all of that stuff, which is a complete lie. Never, nothing like that ever happened. Maybe trolls on the far reaches of Twitter, but no Sussex what I've ever seen was wishing death on her. We're just calling out their lies and refuse to just because, you know, she claims to have cancer. We refuse to back down on calling out her lies. I mean, just because you have cancer doesn't mean you're not a liar. You know what I mean? So they was just the idea that they um that they would be like, oh, just because she said that, therefore you have to back down is ridiculous. So I mean, if you look at the headline of this major crit critic of the royals, is in is U.S. tech chief from H&M, which is Harry and Meghan's Netflix, and you can see it sort of cut off there. But of course, they have to attach Harry and Meghan to it. Part of it is like calling Harry and Meghan to denounce the Sussex squad and to um, cut any ties. I'm like, they don't care about... Like, Harry and Meghan have no... They have no say in what we do. It doesn't matter what they say or don't say. They have no say in what the squad does. We don't get involved in what their business, they don't get involved in ours. It's just simple as that. That's the understanding. You mind your business in Montecito, we mind us here. They have no say in what we do. But it was just, I mean, talk about the huge spread of, this huge spread of attacking Christopher and the, the um, and the Sussex squad. And so Christopher posted this. He says, this is the sun, this is what the Sun published. I have never threatened, made death threats or slurred anyone from the royal family, nor have I stated or implied or suggested that I'm a member of any group. That's right. Christopher works a lot. I mean, he does podcasts and stuff with the Sussex, uh, with Sussex squad, but he's not in Sussex squad. You know, we just do basically the same thing and we go after the lies and try to, and we have receipts and we do the same thing. So while he does stuff with Sussex Squad, it doesn't make him part of Sussex Squad. If he, you know, for us, we look at him as honorary, you know, because um, a lot of the, we go after the trail trolls and all the, the, the British media, the same, but um, some of what they... <laughs> Someone wanted and I had to laugh because I saw part of the article that says Boozy has previously called Prince William a balding Muppet. I mean, where is the lie there, you know? And claimed the future king, um, king and Kate look like Harry's aunt and uncle. Well, yeah. <laughs> he also claimed the Sun exclusive video of Kate at her favorite farm shop in Windsor and the first images of her, uh, the first images after her surgery is fake. We'll get to that in a second. Boozy has appeared on the Sussex Squad podcast created by two American women, also known as Tina and Michelle. <laughs> it's just like, you're writing this about a podcast that's been, I mean, how long has Tina and Michelle ended their podcast like two, three years ago? And they're still on this? I mean, they're literally even quoted um, one of aunts uh, Anne's articles from back there. I mean, it's craziness. They're just trying to find something. So um, Christopher wrote at the bottom here, says, I woke up this morning and discovered the British press has prompted me, the leader of the Sussex Squad. Does this title come with benefits and a 401k plan? Do I have an official duties or is it just a title? Do I at least get a body double? 
<laughs> and again, the stupidity. Again, they think they can't with this nonsense that people are going to like get scared and run away. And then he uh, quote tweeted himself. He says, as the newly crowned elected, um, as the newly crowned elected. Wait, how did I get this title again? Anyway, as my first official act as the Sussex squad leader, I declare war on the British cell phone and cameras. No longer would we allow these devices to flood social media with their blurry and grainy photos, which I've talked about a lot on here. It's almost like Apple does not exist in the UK, that uh, you know, Samsung does not have <laughs> the Android um, software in the UK with these 80s looking blurry 240 <laughs> shooting in 240 or something. I mean, it's crazy with these ridiculous blurry images in the UK. I'm like, what is wrong with you people? Anyway, so this is what they did to um, to Christopher Boozy. And I think a lot of it is they expected people to back down. They expected when they come at you, which is what happens in the UK, they get whether, no matter how high official the person, is, the people are, they back down when the Sun and the Daily Mail come at them. And they get so confused because they've been doing this to the squad for a long time. And it seems like they can't understand look, I'm attacking you. Why aren't you backing down? Why aren't you cowering? Why aren't you going away? And again, they don't understand when they cannot control. These are colonizers. When they cannot control people, it's like they don't know what to do because they just in their mind, they feel like they should be able to control. So one of the reasons why they've been attacking Chris Booth is for this very reason, for this very thing that we've been talking about. Who is the person in the video? Because obviously, especially, you know, with the Kate person, people don't believe that it's actually um, William either. But because it's under a hat, it's a little harder to tell. But definitely just about everyone who had a brain could look at this person who was with supposedly William and figure out, no, that's not, well, that's not Kate. And of course, one of the reasons why they've been attacking Christopher Boozy is to get him to back down to stop talking about this specific thing. So since they've been doing that, Christopher Boozy went ahead and because he's been talking a lot about this, especially this farm shop video. And we talked in the last episode about him dismantling, and what is it, Nelson, whatever his last name is, the guy who shot the video, and basically dismantling his um, argument, uh, you know, and, or his story per se, which keeps changing every few minutes. And you're like, wait a minute, I thought you said you didn't know anything about Kate. And all of a sudden, you know, she was being bullied and you know, she, or at least that's what he's saying. And all of this stuff about a person you claimed before you that you didn't know anything about. So his whole story is dismantling. And so we talked about that in the last one. So Christopher Boozy went ahead and he did, you know, because it's like, okay, let's look and let's, let's use the recognition software, the Amazon recognition software and match up these images and see, okay, according to the software, is it this blurry person in the photo? Does it match the person, Kate Middleton, her photos? And so Christopher Boozy went ahead and did it. So he did this long thread on Spoutable. If you're not on Spoutable, go on Spoutable. Um, you could also pick it up uh, if you're on um, X because, and then link back to Spoutable. But he did this whole thread. And some of the, uh, you know, the first one was about um, Katie Holmes, as you know, doing different photos of her and the software recognition, which is from Amazon recognition. It verified, confirmed that, yes, that's the same person. So you can match it up and try to see if it can recognize people, even though that they have different photos of whether they're smiling, they're, they're serious, they're, the, if the photo is blurry, whatever, you can run that, run it in the software and see if the software recognizes. And this is what Christopher Boozy did. He says, once again, I use Amazon recognition to analyze and the enhanced face of the woman in the sun's front page and the latest photo of Kate with the enhanced photo. If it were Kate, it should match. However, recognition concluded that they are not the same person as you can see in the first one. And you can see in, um, well, I circled it in red, when you put up the person in the photo, in the farm photo, the smiling photo, and against Kate, the latest photos we have of her is her sitting on that bench telling us that she has cancer. You match up those, he matched up those two photos and according to the software, they are not the same people. He decided to try another photo of Kate's. 
um, because she was smiling in the photo. So he used a smiling photo of Kate. He says, I, I then you use the same enhanced photo and another photo of Kate smiling and a similar angle. Recognition still concluded that they are not the same woman. As you can see, I circled it over there. And so it's just like, okay. So he decided let's do something else. It says because the photo in the farm video was blurry. So he used a blurry photo of Kate to see if recognition would find, you know, he, he used a regular photo of Kate that's not blurry and a very blurry one to see if recognition will recognize that as her, her. So it says to prove the recognition should be able to accurately determine a match with an enhanced photo if it were indeed Kate. So I use an extremely blurry photo of Kate, of Kate. Recognition accurately determined that the two photographs of Kate were the same person, even with the extreme blurring. So, which is important because you could say, well, it probably didn't pick it up because it was, you know, it was blurry. Well, this photo of Kate is a lot blurrier than the photo of the girl in the farm video and the, um, the picture. And it's so blurry, but recognition still recognize it as Kate. And so it gives more credence to the fact that, wait a minute, so that person really is not Kate. And he went even further because people were saying that, you know, the, the girl looked younger when I looked at it. She looks much younger than Kate, uh, you know, just by looking at them. And so he went even further. He said, several of you suggested that the woman featured in the farm video appeared appears young. To further investigate this observation, I employed facial analysis technology to estimate her age. According to the tool analysis, she is indeed a younger woman. So she, as you can see in the red, it says she's between 25 and 33 years old. I don't know what the age is of the girl, the... Um, the lookalike girl, I have to go back and check. I didn't get a chance to go back and check her age. Um, but she has wiped herself off social media, so I don't know. <laughs> I, or And took off and took down her website, so I don't know how I would be able to find that. But, um, and he also did um, the age analysis for Kate. It says, using the most recent photograph of Kate, obviously the one from the cancer video, the facial analysis tool accurately es estimated her age as between 40 and 48 years old. And of course, we know I think Kate is what, 41 or something like that she, her, um, is her age. And so it accu accurately said that she is between 40 and 48 years old. And so he did all of this stuff to prove, it's like, wait, you know, to it, which is further proof that the video that the son supposedly bought and they teamed up with TMZ is fake. That is not Kate. <laughs> that is not her. And so TMZ, even when this whole thing started a couple of days later, they completely were backtracking because their picture department were like, oh no, that's not her. And so they did a whole uh, video of their team debunking their own video. <laughs> It was very, it was quite hilarious watching it. You know, oh, uh, Sylvia says Kate is 42 years old. And so the uh, software accurately said her age was between 40 and 48. And so again, I don't know the other girl, what her age is. She's wiped herself off um, the internet. So who knows? Maybe somebody knows her age. Don't know. But it's just, it's very, very, you know, so then you would think after attacking because the Sun and the Daily Mail, and I think it was a New York Post, they were attacking Christopher Boozy for like seven straight days. So since Christopher Boozy put this out, like what, three days ago, however long he put this out, you would think that they would pick up on this because here he is literally calling them liars. And he even challenged them and said, look, this is my receipts. This is what I have and this is my receipts. So instead of attacking me, are you now going to basically show your receipts proving that I'm wrong basically and that your video, that is indeed Kate um, in that video. Shockingly, I have not heard anything from them. It seems they have forgotten that they were attacking Christopher Boozy because I have not heard a thing from them. And so I don't know um, if anybody has heard anything from the Sun or the Daily Mail or the any one of them, but they seem to have gone mute. <laughs>
<laughs> and so it just at this point it's just like you know <laughs> and, and you're like why 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 <laughs> i just I, I can't, anyways, I just, I am dumb fucked it, even though I knew, but it's like, y'all deliberately, because if uh, Victoria Newton was correct, she said she got approval from the palace to put this video out, a couple of things may, a couple of things, it did a, you know, either Kensington Palace uh, really guided her in the wrong way and not say, no, that's not Kate and, um, Kate and William. So don't, I mean, did they just deliberately misdirect them or did they concoct this whole idea? Oh, give me a second because my, um, my computer is running out of juice. So give me one second while I plug in before this shuts down. Ah, there we go. Or, or did Kensington Palace um, concoct this whole thing with the sun to basically fool the public, to lie to the public? So it's one of those things happen. It's either they knowingly misled the sun, and then in that case, why would the sun stay quiet though? I mean, unless they, I mean, again, protecting their access to Kensington Palace, or they both decided we're going to lie to the public and we're going to do this video. And of course, as we've said before, and as Christopher Boozy and others have pointed out, Nelson, whatever his last name is, Vega, whatever his last name is, his story kept changing. So nobody believes that nonsense. And so what it seems like, it seems like they all may have come together and created a false video and with somebody who is not Kate to lie to the public. And so, of course, since, again, Christopher Boozy has dropped this and challenged them to bring their receipts, I have not seen any receipts. Not at all. <laughs> I have not even heard Christopher Boozy in the news. It's like they have just gone mute. They've hit the mute button on this whole thing. It is just, it's... <laughs> And it's just like, are you serious? Unbelievable. And of course, <laughs> Private Eye, which is one of the, you know, he, one of the news, I guess, lesser known news outlets in the UK, who is always trolling uh, the tabloids. This, <laughs> their, their headline was, for God's sake, just leave Kate's alone. Special 98 page leave Kate alone souvenir supplement. <laughs> Which is what they do, because one of the things in um, in when Victoria Newton was on the BBC, the the woman who um, whose show it is specifically asked Victoria Newton about that because her cover was "Leave Kate Alone," yet they had nine pages of coverage <laughs> about Kate. Meanwhile, they are chastising people to leave her alone. Well, how do you have nine page of coverage when you're telling people to leave her alone? Shouldn't you be leaving her alone? And so Victoria Newton's response was no. She, she Because the woman was like, well, don't you find it a bit hypocritical that you're doing that? And she's like, no, I don't, you know, that, no, I don't find. And it's like, again, no self-awareness whatsoever. So that's what private eyes mocking that they're like, leave Kate alone, but have a 90, 94 page leave Kate alone souvenir supplement. I mean, it is ridiculous. So, and then you're like, well, which Kate are we supposed to leave alone? The one in the car, the fake one in the car, the fake one at the farm shop, or the other one who, who is still trying to figure out what that mess is at the bottom there. It's just like, is it AI? Is it, what is it at the bottom? So which Kate are we supposed to leave alone again? I forget. It's just like, you know, unbelievable. And of course, the one in the bottom, there's just, it, we've talked about that in a few episodes. That one is a complete mess because the background is fake. The bench is all weird. The, it just, yeah, it just, at this point, you're like, they just don't want to tell the truth. And when people don't want to tell the truth, you just have to just leave them alone to be. It's like you just, there's nothing you can do. You can't make them tell the truth. We know that they just want to lie. They don't want you to know what's going on, whatever it is they're hiding. And so it's like, you know what? Let's just leave you in the line, your lying cesspool and just move on. It's just, it's craziness. Absolutely craziness because um, 
whether this is something or not. Um, obviously, we know from the left, from the doctored photos that they had, that now they are basically, uh, you know, because of the kill photos, they're basically re referred to or they're, they, whatever comes from them is being dealt with the way they would deal with um, photos or videos from North Korea or Iran, or I always say, or Israel, which is actually worse. Um, or really the U.S. government, which is even worse too. So <laughs> pick one and you can compare the lies of Kensington Palace and treat them the same. But this um, the, this video, the cancer video, on if you go on Getty Images right now, this is the editor's notes that's there. It says, this handout clip was provided by a third-party organization and may not adhere to Getty Images editorial policy. In this handout video provided by Kensington Palace, and it goes on to talk about what the video is. And it says, you know, that this video may not adhere to editorial policy. And apparently they do that to third party. You know, I'm like, oh, so Kensington Palace is a third party? Didn't know that until <laughs> they realized that. But apparently this is how they handle it. So whether, I, you know, I, I think we need to get more clarification from Getty as to is there something specific that they see? I mean, we see a bunch of stuff on this video that is just like, that's not real, <laughs> including the flowers in the background, the tree in the background there. Um, but BBC has been very squirrely about not giving information about this video, including where it was shot, who are the who the production team that shot it? Was AI used? Was there any editing? Because they came out and said, oh, no, no, editing was used. All of us who know Kate Middleton and who have listened to Kate Middleton over the years, no matter how little, we know that Kate Middleton mumbles and she basically cannot finish a sentence without looking at something or reading it off something. And she does, I mean, you can sometimes barely understand some of the things she's saying. And here she was very, very clear, very concise. You couldn't hear, I mean, there was no mumbling involved. And so it's like anybody who knows Kate knows, it's like, mm, that's not her on a normal day because we know how she speaks and we know speaking and, and whether it's in front of a camera or public speaking, it is very difficult for her. Now I'm not knocking her for that because I know that is a challenge for a lot of people. A lot of people, especially whether it's, speaking in front of people, or sometimes people are even more afraid in front of a camera because you have this thing that is like an eye looking at you and it's very scary. And I know that, and as a photographer, I know that. And so I don't knock her for speaking and all of those things, but I do say this person speaking so eloquently doesn't sound like the Kate we know. Now, maybe she could have practiced for days and days and days and memorized everything. That's possible. That is quite possible. And if she did, you know, props to her because it's a lot better than what she's done before. But you can excuse people for questioning. It's like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> that don't sound like the Kate we know. So <laughs> you can forgive people for questioning that. You know, so again, the BBC has not been up front. So I know this news outlet, I think it's called LNN or something like that. They have done an a. They have sent an FOI to um, BBC, and they said they will hear back from them in twenty days. I'm like, why do you need twenty days to to simply say, you know, yes, it was filmed outside. Yes, there are no a. No, there are no a. Whatever the questions were asked, specific question to see if this video was manipulated in any way, which people have every right to ask because again, you're coming. This is coming from people who are basically. Israel. So yeah, that's all you need to know. So, um, and then, oh God, it's, uh, <laughs> Maureen, you know, it's all funny with squatties, how we, um, the simplest ways to get a, and to really expose these British reporters. If you don't know, this is Richard Eden. Richard Eden is one of the nastiest, most, I don't know, I, I the, <laughs> pick an adjective for this guy. It is just, ew, it sort of makes you, he makes your skin crawl. So back, I think it was what, 2020, I think this happened. So um, <laughs> Richard Eden was attacking Live to Lead. 
And um, V, who had a podcast, I, I don't think she has a podcast anymore. At least I, I'm not sure. I haven't heard her podcast in a while. But Richard Eden, you know, as with a lot of British reporters, they have these burner accounts where, you know, they have their regular accounts where on X, but then they have these burner accounts where they either communicate with trolls or attack the Sussexes in whatever ways. Christopher, uh, um, Richard Eden has one, Chris Ship had one. I forgot what Chris Ship, and they all use women's name. These men always, their burner account always is a name of a woman, Richard Eden included. So this little thing happened. It says, Richard Eden posting, lift the lead. It's fascinating to see how ambitious Prince Harry has become. It's becoming increasingly clear that he and Meghan are determined to establish themselves as the new woke royals across the water while denigrating the old ones back home. So V responded to him. She says, Meghan actual, Meghan's actually the oldest out of the Fab Four and Harry was always the most ambitious of the brothers. Don't get upset that the old ones are stale and boring as hell. Um, glad to know you'll be watching since the old ones don't pay your bills. To which Richard Eden, I guess, forgot he was on his burner account, responded as Maureen Ayres. You don't pay, you don't know who pays my bills, so don't assume thereby outing himself as Maureen. So ever since that happened, he is now known as, which is actually was in 2022, December 22, when um, December 20th, 2022, which um, as you can see at the bottom there, which is when we, re we found out that what his burner account was, which is obviously Maureen. So as you can see at the pictures on the right, then so you give that little, um, give that bit to Sussex Squad. And so they have provided Richard by day and Maureen by night, <laughs> obviously. So that's, that's what the squad will do. And so one of the things with uh, Maureen, he has, you know, he is the one, if you remember, he's the one that started this whole rumor with Kate Middleton and um, Rose and this whole, you know, um, competition between them and turns out with, with allegedly is because of William and all of this mess. It was he and Dan Wooten started that whole mess, but he's the one that originally tweeted this whole thing. And so that's where it started with him. And then all of a sudden he is now the most ardent William and Kate supporter and attacking the Sussexes in every way, shape or form, um, you know, to basically uplift the Cambridge, well, the whales is now. And so if you see in the back of Richard in that middle picture with the dog, in case you hadn't noticed it before or hadn't seen this before, that's Kate Middleton's brother who has a dog business, I guess a dog food business. And so he gave Richard some, um, some, you know, some dog food or whatever. And so Richard has been singing his praises. Thank you. Oh, thank you, James Middleton for the goodies you sent for Windsor, his little dog there. Uh, new puppy. It's very thoughtful of you, whatever, whatever. And so obviously with that, Richard has been, you know, falling head over heels even more about Kate and her family. Latest one is wanting Harry and Meghan to bow down and basically ask for forgiveness from the sus. I mean, it's just name it daily in no matter what lying, whatever it is, Richard Eden is there to go after the Sussexes. And so Christopher Boozy in the middle of them attacking Richard Eden was one of the people that was attacking Christopher Boozy through the Daily Mail. Um, so Christopher Boozy wrote, I am seriously considering publishing a British tab um, br publishing a report on British tabloid journalists who use burner accounts for the purpose purposes beyond merely viewing content. Richard Eden further <laughs> implicating himself. Go ahead, make my day. And so it's just like, if you didn't know that Richard Eden or didn't believe Richard Eden had an account, a burner account, which is Maureen, now, you know, he further implicates himself that yes, he is the one using burner accounts to do more than just, you know, view other accounts that maybe have blocked him or whatever. But it's just, it's really wild. I mean, and if you look at what Christopher Boozy didn't name anybody, he just said, you know, I'm thinking of going <laughs> and doing a uh, report on these reporters that use burner accounts. And Richard Eden, you know, it's like a hit dog holler. There you go. <laughs> it's like, go ahead, make my day. It's like, dude, 
that's kind of not the <laughs> that's not what you think it is it is just really really wild but i mean he's one of the just the nastiest patrol thank you <laughs> he will ever ever oh come across but again he was part of the people that think if you attack the squad if you attack you know, if you attack Christopher Boozy or whatever, that will back down, that he would back down. And it's like, they're learning that, no, we're not going to back down. We'll just bring more receipts to prove you're a liar. And we'll, you know, do other stuff to expose you. And just like that, Christopher Boozy further, excuse, uh, um, you know, exposed him. And so it's just, so obviously now everybody's on back on Maureen. So it's very, 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 <laughs> very interesting with the with them. But anyways, um, just a couple more things before um, I jump into the chat. Uh, someone posted this and it just, you know, with William and, you know, staying on William and Kate. It's just very, I saw this and I, I seen this a long time ago, but it was just really very where, you know, we think what may be going on with them is, I think this was also at the Diana concert with them. It's like, you notice know, Harry's girlfriend. I think this is Chelsea, I would think. That's probably Chelsea sitting next to Harry there or one of the other girls. I don't know. I think it's Chelsea. But um, if you notice uh, where Kate is, it's like William is up front and Kate is all the way in the back there. And it kind of is indicative of their relationship where Harry's side by side with his wife or girlfriend and she is not and it's it always seems like she's not a priority in so many i mean if if you go by photos or the little clips you have of them it's always like she is the one in the background and so it just it's wild it's really wild but i just saw that and it was very like hmm, very interesting and then yesterday uh obviously easter People are upset because Prince Andrew is, I mean, that's Charles and Camilla um, up front and right back, right in the back is uh, Prince Andrew. And uh, people are, you know, knickers are all in the twist because obviously Prince Andrew is right there and up right there, the camera. I'm like, dude, and I've said this this whole time, I have no problem with Prince Andrew there at all. <laughs> Because my thing has always been, if you can accept King Charles, you can accept uh, Prince Andrew. There's no point to you with this the ridiculous fake outrage that is like, I cannot believe Andrew's there front and center. Hello, Charles is front and center. You made him your king. So if you can accept Charles, then Andrew's, they're two pieces of pot. They're one and the same. So yeah, <laughs> I don't see what this all like. I can't believe Andrews they had. I mean, look, since the queen was here, the queen was rehabilitating Andrew the whole time. We've talked about this on numerous occasions that they would put him out there in the in the crowd, um, in, in the public, and bring him back. Put him out there and bring him back. That's what they do. They, all it does is just break down the resolve of people who are angry at seeing him. Now there's barely a fuss. There's still some who are kicking up a storm, but the the amount of people have definitely gone down because people are now used to seeing him as part of the family. It's what they do. They're not going to apologize. They're not going to explain. They're just going to put it there and you're just going to have to accept it again. If you can accept King Charles as your king, then you should have no problems accepting Andrew. So there, <laughs> so I don't know what they're kicking up a stink about. Unbelievable. And obviously, um, this is coming out uh, April 5th, Scoop with Prince Andrew. And again, this is the famous in interview he did with Emily Maitlis, um, you know, and he <laughs> talked about pizza. What is it? Pizzeria and Woking. He was there, so he couldn't have been with Virginia and all that nonsense. Well, yep, they're doing a whole Netflix uh, documentary, I guess, or film about, I guess, how they got the interview and, and the lead up to it and all of that stuff. And obviously you can see the photo on the right is that that's the actual interview that Prince Andrew amazingly thought was, um, he thought it was a great success until the reviews came in and then it's like, oh, what did we do? <laughs> but it's funny because I appreciated that interview. I appreciate that because I got to see Andrew. He wasn't like, oh, you know, I love these women. I respect them. I would never know. He was like, he didn't care about them. They were just things to him. And he was honest about that. Yes, he said that he didn't do anything and he was at pizzeria or in Woking or whatever. But 
you got to see him for who he is. And I look, I rather see you for who you are, honestly, who you are, than to for you to be faking to be something like the you know, uh, William and Kate are completely faking who they are. Meanwhile, we know that they're lying. Andrew is just like, they are just like people, they are always around. I, you know, he doesn't care about them, he doesn't think any. He doesn't put any value on them and he didn't pretend. And I appreciated that. I appreciated knowing that. So I don't, I'm not surprised at anything Andrew does. So yeah. So again, that's coming out on the fifth. So very, very, very interesting uh that. So, anyways, and um people were going after Andrew at the service. Well, here's your friendly R Richard Palmer <laughs> standing up to for Prince Andrew's honor. As ever, the presence of Prince Andrew at the royal service has been seized on by the British Republican movement. Graham Smith, chief executive of Republic, has branded Prince Andrew's appearance as a disgrace. Others will argue, well, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. And there we are, folks. There we are where the British are. They're like, you know what? If you're perfect, then you be the one that um, to cast a stone. How dare you cast a stone at Andrew? Yes, he's an alleged pedophile. So what? You're not any better. So who are you to be twisting your knicker and calling, you know, saying bad stuff about Andrew? But just because he went to church and was front and center, whatever. If you are not without, if you are without sin, you cast the first stone. This is where they are now. <laughs> so yeah, so much for the outrage. Anyway, so I'm going to jump in the chat. And uh, see what you guys are saying. That's a whole lot. <laughs> so little Max says, Where, where's Maureen's shoulders? He looks so frail and small <laughs> when not in a suit. <laughs> I have no idea where Maureen's shoulders are. <laughs> oh, let's see. Little Mac, oh, Little Mac, we're staying with you. Um, Mary Davis, I agree, it is all William. He did something, and that's why he is allegedly drunk in public and hiding out. No idea what's going. William is, I have no idea. I mean, I can understand Kate Middleton not being at the service if, you know, if, it, if indeed she does have cancer, as she says. I could understand that, you know, whatever. But why wasn't William there again? It just, it's crazy. Uh, let's see. Uh, you know, I so I posted the other day, if Camilla becomes your next monarch, don't be shocked. <laughs> I mean, Camilla, Camilla already has the press in the, you know, she definitely has the press on side. They are under her thumb. She, I'm sure she has some government officials under her thumb. And yes, I know the line of succession. I understand it all. But there are things that we never thought could happen that are happening right now. So don't be surprised because I'm telling you, William has nothing on this woman. And the fact that she's been the one instead of William filling in for the king, don't be surprised because they've already started writing about her in a way that is like, William, uh, you better, whatever stupor you're in, you better get out and get out, get out of that quickly because, hmm. <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, Rohini said, hi, Rohini. Rohini says, didn't Maureen come for Boozy? Yes, he did. He's still doing it. So, yes, he did. And so ever since Boozy put out that challenge and put out his receipts, I haven't heard of, I haven't heard from any of them saying anything because you would think, right, if Boozy is wrong, that they would challenge him and they would put out their receipts to prove that what he was saying was wrong. And what the Sussexes were um, talking, um, not the Sussexes, but the Sussex squad was been talking about, that it was lies. You would think they would bring their receipts to challenge. They have not said a word. They have all run away and hit the mute button. And so you know that's the reason why they were talking, because they're trying to hide. And because the squad and uh, Boozy, Christopher Boozy, won't let them lie in peace, they thought, let's attack so that maybe they'll shut up. They didn't plan on this. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have hit the mute button at this moment. So who knows? We'll see where we'll go. Um, 
Kim says, Lori, oh, she's talking to Lori. The unroyals chased our Megan away from that family. I don't think America is going to, um, is well going to welcome them anytime soon. I mean, there are parts of America that is all about royals that will. There's, you know, there are royalists all over the, the U.S. I mean, there, you know, so um, there is, America is just, it's not a place where it's just, you know, all of for one person or all for the other. There's a market here for just about everything. And so there is a market here for the royals, no matter what they do. Why? Because they're, you know, white supremacist mothership. So it doesn't matter what they do. They're the Trump, uh, Trumpers of the world that would just honor them and raise them up no matter what they do, no matter if they committed crime or not. They would just be there for them. So yeah, America is like that. We're not, uh, we're not, yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Um, and that Benny says, I just saw a post that Prince Harry announced Meghan is pregnant with her third child. I don't, I've been on here, so I haven't seen anything. So I have no idea. Um, <laughs> I have no idea about it. It's the first I'm seeing about that. So <laughs> I have no idea. Um, um, of course, that could also be a lie. So unless you're seeing it from Harry or Meghan themselves, I wouldn't uh, put stock in that. So yeah, but who knows? Again, I have been on here, so I don't know. News come very fast in the world. So yeah, who knows? Uh, the time I, you know, the time I've been on here, what could have been happening on, uh, on, uh, especially on social media. Uh, Sonia said TMZ was bamboozled. <laughs> Well, the funny thing with them, when they, you know, it was a day later, the minute they got it and they put it out, they were so confident. Kudos to them for backtracking. And they did it on camera and put out the video because they were doubting themselves. And it was a very, very funny <laughs> watching them doubt themselves. And they just made a mockery of themselves and they put it out. It was very funny watching them do it because they were very honestly confused. And they were like, well, we thought, but now we asked our picture department and they are saying no. And now we don't know. <laughs> They're like, what is up and what is down? We don't know. <laughs> so I think it was very, very smart of them to do that because they were as confused as everyone else and they were publicly confused, which is a lot more than you could say for the Sun and the Daily Mail who, you know, this, they're probably going through the same thing. But they don't. They would never admit they're wrong, which is the difference between the U.S. culture and the U.K. culture. Because I think it's like this: the shame. Because U.K. has the shame culture that they are so afraid to say I'm wrong. They are so afraid to say, you know what? I made a mess. I'm sorry. They are so afraid because they're there's this always like they're gonna shame you, and then that'll be the end of you. In America, you're allowed to make more mistakes. And be like, you know what? I made a mess, <laughs> you know? And you're a little more lenient. Yes, you're going to get hit for, you know, maybe for a day or so. But then life goes on. You don't have that as much in the UK, it seems. It's more of a, you made a mistake, then that's it for you, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Mary says, I don't think any of this is Kate's fault. I think it's all William. Well, uh, could be, but again, they're all adults. So <laughs> I think there's a lot of blame to carry around there. I mean, unless he, you know, he is holding her as a prisoner or something, as an adult, she could make um, her own decisions as well. So yeah, but you know, everybody's different. Um, <laughs> he says, Maury need to live his truth. <laughs> but truly, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Kim Fisher says, uh, Pedal, uh, when I'm not feeling my best, I want to, I don't want a big conversation. We can be very sure that was AI prompted for them to cover their tushes. Mm, when I'm not feeling my best. I don't want a big conversation. I, we can be sure that was AI prompted for them to cover their I'm not sure I fully understand what you mean. Explain a little bit, um, Kim. I'm not sure I fully understand. I want to understand what you mean. So um, post something, uh, just a little explanation of what you mean. So, yeah. Um, uh, let's see. 
scrolling down a little bit. Let's go down, see what else you guys have to say. Gwen says, Clueless Kate does what William tells her to do. Um, I'm sure with some things that as heir to the throne, but then to think of his taking all, then that's to take away her agency. And I think she is a woman of agency. I don't want to take that away from her, that she can make her own decisions. Um, but I, I, yeah, William is the heir and I'm sure he has final word in a lot of things. But I do believe, you know, at least I think, <laughs> Um, you know, unless she's the queen back, you know, back in the day, the queen was elderly and she didn't have, you know, she's not like she could get up and run off, you know, she wasn't there, but I think Kate has, and also with her family there, I think she has a little bit more of a, a little bit more oomph about her, I would think. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Trish Nelly says, if it's not on Sussex.com, it's not true. Oh, I'm, I'm assuming with the uh, <laughs> with the photo. Yeah, and I think we all have to remember this too. <laughs> April Fool's jokes. That could be why someone would put that again. The Sussexes, how they announce things, wouldn't be somebody just posting that on social media. So, But it's a good one though. <laughs> And I mean, hey, it's a possibility. They said no more, but hey, stuff happens, you know? <laughs> stuff happens when you love each other. You do things <laughs> to create babies. So there. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Um. Kenita says, hi, V, one of these days. Uh, who's V? Okay, not sure. One of these days, William may call his brother and confess everything. Confess is Confession is good for the soul. It is definitely good for the soul. So will William do that? I, William would have to go in therapy, I think, first. I think there's so many things there that could have been avoided with William, especially his anger issues. If he would... Go and get help. And again, they they even though they talk about mental health, mental health, people need to talk about things, he hasn't. And so he has all this build up. And I think it's there from childhood. You don't lose your mother in the way that they had lost their, their mother and not get help. That stuff is so damaging. And then being in that family, that's why Harry was so messed up for so long. And it's sad to see that William still has not, and, you know, maybe he is now, maybe hopefully with, you know, and to put that on top of it. If, if it is true that his wife is cancer and his father, if that is a big, if there, if that's true, that's a lot to put it, you know, that's a lot to carry because again, he could be, you know, orphaned. And then has a wife that he, you know, who has, that is a lot. If, if all of those things is true, you need help. And then put on top of that, if that all is true, you if your father passes at any moment, you're going to be king. That is a whole lot. And I to, to have to bear that stuff without help, without having to, having dealt with your emotional stuff from a childhood, I'm telling you. If it is true, as people are saying, he's drinking, I could understand why. Because you're going to want to numb that stuff if you haven't dealt with it. If any of this, again, this is a big if and allegedly, because I don't know, I don't have the facts of all of this stuff. But again, it is sad that William has not and had not gone and sought help because it would have helped in so many ways with what he is possibly dealing with now. So, yeah. Hopefully he sees the light and, and decides to get help. So, yeah. Uh, let's see what else you guys are saying. Um, um, a TB, TB says, it's a beautiful life. Kim, uh, the regent would be a person born royal. Uh, it would go to Harry, if not Harry, Andrew <laughs> would be the next then Edward. You know, with, without Camilla being there, I would say, yeah, that would definitely be where we go. But don't be surprised. I am just saying that would normally be the route. Absolutely. But don't be surprised. 
at Camilla. If Camilla is around after, you know, because we don't know who passes first. I mean, only the Lord knows that. He Charles could be sick and others go before him. You know, we don't know. But if he passes before Camilla, I would not be surprised if all of this stuff is upended. <laughs> I would not be surprised. And Camilla inserts herself there or has convinced Charles to insert her there before he passed. I would not be surprised at any of these things at all, which is exactly what I expect to happen. And hopefully Harry, if, you know, if it has to be a point where Harry, you know, he's next. I hope Harry's like, thank you, but no. <laughs> and I think Andrew would be the perfect person for them. Absolutely perfect. So there. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it's so funny. I saw this photo and um, someone in, uh, online posted it. It looks like it, almost like an Easter service, I think. And um, and I don't, don't know. I don't necessarily know that these were the same day because the coat is different. I think the one with Diana, the, the buttons look like they're black. And then the one with the queen, it's like white. And But it's very interesting, you know, just, just thinking in terms of um, Diana's relationship with Harry and then the queen relationship with Harry because they were coming out of a church and everyone, all the family was coming out and only Harry was with the queen. And then Harry is the only one that it, it seemed that got to ride in the car with the queen. This is part of a little video. You can see Harry in the little um, photo in the middle there with the queen. That was, he is, um, the queen got in before him and he's in, uh, in the car with her. And I always think of these photos. I know Harry has this great relationship with the queen. And part of this video is that you can hear the cameras, tons and tons of cameras clicking um, as this uh, the queen is there with Harry and they went into the car and you can see Harry looking at them. And I always, you know, I saw this and I, I smiled because I knew Harry's relationship. But I also remember we talked about this probably a couple of years ago when Pamela was doing this podcast with me. And we talked about just how the queen works where she has two favorites. Like they always say that like, Harry's one of her favorites grandchildren and Andrew is her favorite son. And it's always the spare. That's her favorite. It's always the spare. And it's wild because the ones who is termed her favorites are the ones that is thrown to the wolves are the ones that is, the British press is allowed to destroy the air. And it always, like, even though I saw, and it's just such a beautiful, you know, a little boy with his grandmother, and you know how he loves her. The other part of me, when I saw this, I knew, is these are the ones that it, the press is allowed, the same clicking, those people with the cameras in the back of you are allowed to destroy. And it's like, you have this double, it's her favorite, but it's her favorite that the she and the royal family and the monarchy allows the press to destroy. And it broke my heart when I saw this photo because I was like, wow, it's like a double-edged sword here. It's just, it's really, really wild. But anyways, yeah, I saw this and it was just very, very, very interesting. Anyways, we're going to get back to this in another day, um, Camilla and her schedule. But finally, I saw this and it was just, you know, what's going on in Palestine. It was one of these heartwarming pictures in spite of the horror that's there. Um, all the schools, obviously, we know Israel has destroyed. But there's this principle. It says a school principal used the tent as a teaching space for displaced children in Rafa, southern Gaza. Most of Israel, uh, most of Palestine, uh, most of Gaza is destroyed. And, you know, more than a million people are now packed into Gaza, which is too being destroyed. But this principal found this beautiful little tent and this beautiful space and made this beautiful space. And it looks like this private, safe, seemingly safe space for these children to come to school and to feel like, you know what? Yes, I'm displaced, but I could still learn. And it's just, I just, it, it just warmed my heart to see it. And I thought I'd just share it. But anyway, that's it. That's all I got. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Lydia, Church Nelly, Karen M. Cookies and Cream Black Queen. You are awesome as usual. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, you guys. I appreciate it. I will be back tomorrow. Thank you uh, to all of you who support the channel um, and also our amazing Two Cents crew who support on a monthly basis. And to those of you who support in the chat, I appreciate, or PayPal or Cash App. Thank you all so much for all of your support. I love you all. Have a fantastic day and I shall chat with you all tomorrow. Bye. Ooh.